Welcome everybody to the Invasive Strike Force Survey Training Part 2 for survey procedures and reporting. I am Brent Boscarino. I'm the Associate Director of Stewardship at the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference and really excited to see you all here tonight and learn about how to go about reporting invasive species along the trails that we love to explore. So if you are here, the vast majority of you have already completed Part 1, which was the field IDs to learn a little bit about what we are expecting. There you are, Thea and Irene, two of our uh, veteran surveyors on the first slide. Um, tonight, you're going to be learning about the data collection process. And then after tonight, you're going to be ready to go. You'll be assigned a one to two mile section of trail to search for the five invasive species we learned about in part one. And the beauty of this is that it should be convenient and fun for you all. Um, you're going to have a full field season to complete this. You've already learned the IDs. The growing season and the survey season is going to begin once we send assignment out, which will be in the next week or two weeks. And then you can just have until September to complete your section and return the data to us. So this should be fun. It should be relaxing and also really informative, not only for you, but for us at the trail conference about these high priority species, where they're popping up so that we can make better management decisions moving forward. So you know, again, this takes a team and a village, right? So let's do this together. We are a team. We take action together. I learn from you um, and you learn from us as to what to be on the lookout for. So let's do this. All right, step one in part of the requesting receiving a survey assignment is essentially to fill out a survey questionnaire. It's going to prompt you to choose a trail section, favorite park, basically something convenient, something you want to explore. Um, many of you who are returning surveyors have already received this questionnaire. So if you received a Google form from me or from Christy that says, you know, what park do you want to survey in this year? You're already all set if you filled that out. But for those of you who are newer surveyors, you're going to receive an email from me in the next, um, actually tonight at the, at the end of this webinar, you'll receive, um, you know, a Google form to essentially look at what trail section or park you want to explore this year. Then a week or two from now, you're going to receive directions to your trailhead and the trail section map to go along with it. You're also going to receive a quick ID guide of the species to print to take out with you. Christy has done a wonderful job in providing the artistic design for this quick ID guide. I'll show you that in a second. You're also going to receive a data sheet for reporting invasive species, which we'll be reviewing tonight. And of course, links to the training workshops for review, including the one that we are recording right now. I just wanted to show you what this quick ID guide is going to look like and just a reminder of the species that we are looking for. This is just a really quick quick ID guide of, of the five species we'll be, we'll be on the search for this year. Free of Heaven, Spotted Lanternfly with a little bit of information on each as well as some of the pictures of key ID features. We're going to be looking for beech leaf disease, remember, so not only looking for beech leaf disease itself, but the trees. We want to see if we can find some healthy beech out there. Same goes with hemlocks. So we're going to be looking for a forest pest, hemlock woolly adelgid, which we learned about in part one. But we're also going to be looking on the lookout for healthy hemlocks and seeing if we can use those to kind of, uh, you know, think about the next decisions for biocontrol release and to protect the trees that seem to be doing well. Um, and we'll also be looking for a black swallow wart. And again, Christy did a great job of summarizing what the main key ID features are, as well as some pictures to go along with it. So you'll be receiving that um, in the next few days, or I would say a couple of weeks to go along with your survey assignment. So that's step number one is requesting the assignment and then uh, getting a survey assignment out to you all. Um, but before we even start doing that, I did sound, send out some instructions for step two. A lot of the reporting will be on field data sheets, but we're also going to be do, using a map, uh, excuse me, an app uh, called IMAP Invasives. For those of you who had were surveying last year, you already have an IMAP Invasives account and you should be all set. There may be some minor updates that you might need to do next time you sign in. But if you've already signed up for this, you should be good to go. But step number two is essentially creating your IMAP Invasives account. And I want to make a point that you're going to have to create a New York IMAP Invasives account online, online on your computer itself. And then you're also going to have to download the app. So I'm going to show you how, how to go about doing that. The first thing that you are going to do is to, let me just move things out of my Zoom window here. You're going to be going to New York 
imapinvasives.org. And I put this in my instructions over an email to you all, but this is what that homepage is going to look like. It'll show you a map of New York and it'll show just some postings from that for of invasive species that have been put out by surveyors and volunteers or you know managers in our area. But the first thing that you are going to do if you haven't already created an account is to click this button right here called create account. And it's kind of neat. Actually, the featured species for the month is Tree of Heaven. And I will say that there are some people on this call who won last year's challenge for most posts for Tree of Heaven. So it's cool that not only are you going to be posting and doing good work for our region, but you can also win prizes and things. So there's a couple of different incentives for posting to IMAP Invasive. So first thing you're going to do is create an account. That's going to take you to a page that looks like this once it loads. All right, this is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. You're gonna put in your first name, last name, et cetera, right? So you're just gonna sign up this way, okay? You're gonna type in your email address and then um, retype your email address. And then it's gonna prompt you for a password. The only thing that I'll say in this part when you're signing up for an account is to please write down what your email is that you use to make sure that's something that you're gonna be checking and make sure to write down what the password is because you're going to need both the email address, which is your username and the password when you start to download the app itself. Right now, you're just making an account on IMAP Invasives. The only other thing that I will mention is in this part here under where it says jurisdiction when you are signing up, if you think that your trail section and where you're going to be surveying is going to be in a park or natural area in New York State, just pull down the list for jurisdiction as New York State. If you are gonna be surveying in a forest in New Jersey, um, just pull down New Jersey. That is now an option. You can report to IMAP invasives in both New York State and New Jersey. So it's really as simple as that. Once you hit that join button, that is going to essentially set up your account. This is uh, very important. So after you hit that join button, you are gonna receive an email from New York IMAP Invasives. Check your spam, check your uh, inbox that you use for your email address, and just make sure that you have received an email from them. And it's going to act, ask you to activate the account. So just hit click, yes, uh, activate the account, and then you should be good to go. All right, um, so that is pretty much, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. You're just answering a few easy questions. Now you got an email, uh, you know, you got an account set up in IMAP Invasives, and you should be good to go. Okay, moving on to step three. And that is setting up an IMAP Invasives mobile account. So you need to go to Google Play, or if you have an Android, um, or you would go to your App Store um, if you have an iPhone. That being said, there are some kinks that we are working out. In fact, IMAP Invasives is currently working out. If you have a new Android phone, and Christy, I don't know exactly what model it is. Maybe you could look that up from an email, but essentially, if you have a new Android phone and you recently updated it, you're not gonna be able to download this app, but there is a second option for you that we're working through. So for now, if you're not able to get the IMAP Invasives mobile app on your phone it could, because you have a new Android, don't worry about it. You'll, be, you'll still be able to do this survey. You'll just be working off of field data sheets for now um, and maybe not doing the, the mobile app posting until they work out what that bug is. But for everybody else, all iPhone users, um, anyone that already created an IMAP Invasives account or had an, has an Android but already has an IMAP Invasives uh, mobile app downloaded to their phone, this will not impact you at all. If you have an iPhone, it won't impact you. So in other words, if you were a surveyor last year, this should have no impact regardless of what type of phone you have. This is just for new surveyors who have like the most recent version of Android in which you might not be able to download the app. If that is the case, uh, please reach out to us so we can get like an ongoing list of who maybe doesn't have the app and we'll go from there. But this shouldn't, this is not going to prevent you from doing the surveying this year. Okay. Once you have the IMAP Invasives mobile app downloaded to your phone, you will open it up and it's going to look like this. All right. It's a bit of a weird like uh, opening screen. It's almost like a scrawled, like someone has been writing on it. You're just going to click right on that, and then it's going to open into an even stranger opening screen, which is just like a basically a green screen here. The first thing that you are going to do once you kind of hit this, it just kind of takes you through the menu, um, and then you're going to get to this green screen. You see up here in the top left, it, there's three little lines or hash marks that come across. 
you are going to click on that and that's going to pull you down to a pull down menu. All right. And that pull down menu looks exactly like it does on the screen right now. You are going to click that preferences part because you basically right now all you're doing is just setting up the account, the mobile app. OK, so once you click on that preferences. And again, that's in the top left and those three hash marks over there, you're going to set up, you're, you're going to get into your preferences menu. And once you click on preferences there, it's going to open into this. Be, uh, if you again are going to be serving in New York, all you need to do for this is just pull down for jurisdiction and species list. It, this just says that all the species that are found in New York, uh, this is going to pull that up. So just choose if you're surveying in New York and New Jersey. It's really not going to matter because we have the we we have some very similar species between the states. But just choose the jurisdiction list that you signed up for when you created the account. You'll this is the important part of why I asked you to remember what email address you used and your password because this is how the mobile app is linking to that account that you set up through IMAP Invasive. So all you need to do is right here just type in the email address you used to set up what your IMAP passwords in password was that you had written down and you should be good to go. All right. The other thing that I want to mention um, is that under and we'll we'll get back to this retrieve IMAP list part in a second. But down here under this display here, it says species name display and it gives you the option to either choose scientific or common names. We are dealing with five species that we are looking for. And essentially it's gonna create um, basically a shortcut to get to the species that we are looking for this year. Click on common because that way we'll use common names. So as opposed to using the Latin names of these species we'll be looking for, we'll be using things like Hemlock Woolly Adelgid, Spotted Lanternfly, Free of Heaven, and not their Latin names. So just click common and we'll just speak in a common name language with each other moving forward. The other thing that you are going to do is IMAP Invasive is going to ask you when you're out in the field reporting to take a picture of what it is that you're looking at. You can choose any kind of picture quality. I usually choose 100% because typically when you post to IMAP Invasives with that picture, there's going to be someone who needs to confirm, like either that's me or someone on the IMAP team, is going to confirm that what you saw is actually the right species. And so taking a good picture is important. So having good picture quality, I think is best. So I would choose 100% for that pull down menu. And then lastly, you're gonna click on this customized species list and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. The other thing to do before you get out of this preferences menu is to make sure, and I'm gonna repeat this over and over and over again, make sure when you set up this account to hit this button, click retrieve IMAP list to upload your project information because what that does is that that is going to pull all of the different species that are gonna that you're gonna need to find and actually import them into this app. So please, most of the like, the, if you do this step, hit retrieve IMAP list. You should be good to go, and you should have no problems using the app moving forward. Just make sure that you click that retrieve IMAP list, and then you should you, you should everything should be fine after that. Okay, the last thing to do is to click that customize species list. And again, we're just going to be adding, it's gonna pull you, pull it down like a Rolodex. Um, and we are just gonna click on it, the species that we wanna look for. So what this step does is think about every single invasive species that you could post in New York State or New Jersey. This is just gonna narrow it down to the five that we're looking for so that every time you post an observation, you don't have to scroll through all these other names of every other single species that you could be reporting. So it's just gonna make a shortcut to just the ones that we're interested in with this survey. You'll be adding Spotted Lanternfly, Free of Heaven, these are the common names. I am going to ask you all to select Black Swallowwort. It is possible, like we said in the last um in in the last part one that you could find pale swallowwort which is that almost like uh peach ish flower of swallowwort if you do see that you can choose black you can choose pale swallowwort but for now the vast majority of what you're going to see out there is going to be black swallowwort to, so choose that as your shortcut the common name for beech leaf disease is beech leaf disease nematode so again you're just going to scroll through this hitting check marks to all of these names the other one is Hemlock Willie Adelgid. And just for this training purposes, under F, 
in, in the alphabet here, there's actually something called fake species for testing. It's literally called that. So you can check that tonight. Uh, you can check that and just have it be like a, a practice run because at the end of this webinar, there's gonna be an opportunity to practice posting to IMAP invasives for those who want to stay and just like practice to make sure that you understand how, how to post. And we're just going to post a fake species. So once you've selected spotted lanternfly tree of heaven, black swallowwort, beech leaf disease, hemlock woolly adelgid, you are just going to hit OK down here in the menu. And that's going to take you back to the main preferences page. OK, so on that preferences page, the only other thing that um, you will have to add to this is you'll see some You'll see some different um, menu options to choose from. You obviously want to uh, be working in US customary um, measurement system. Um, the default base map doesn't really doesn't really matter. You can use road or satellite, doesn't really matter. Um, the one thing that I will say is that a lot of people try to add the default project as lower Hudson Prism. You don't need to do that. In fact, you can't, you don't have the uh, authorization to do that. I have to do that on my end. So even though this is what it appears like on my phone, you can just leave that right now. You can just leave that default project part blank. Same thing with the default organization. You don't need to be added to the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference or Lower Hudson Prism to participate in this survey project. You can just leave the default project place and the default organization pull down menu. You can just leave those blank. So really all you need to do on this lower part of it um, is just leave these blank and then hit save. That's it. Okay, that seemed like a lot, but you will never have to do that again. You're just signing up on the computer, you're getting the app, you're putting in those menu options, you're hitting click those, click those lists to import the list and that's it. You will never have to do that again. That's the hardest part. And it's actually pretty straightforward. It, the, the menu options are, are, are pretty pretty straightforward. Okay, so that takes us to step five. It's, it's time to get out there, get ready to go. So you are, this is what I recommend before you go out survey. Remember, at this point, you'll have already received a trail assignment from me. You'll have, um, you know, received parking directions of where to park and how to access that trail for me. I would recommend reviewing, grabbing your quick ID guide that I showed you before. And before you set out, if there's an ID that you're like still a little unsure about, just review a little section of the part one webinar on the IDs just to like brush up on it before you head out. Just like a short video clip on it uh, as part of the larger webinar, just so you're feeling confident going out. This is another thing I'd recommend is of course, to make sure you've got a fully charged phone. So you are gonna be using an app while you are out there. Um, so it is important like to make sure that you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to take pictures and things. So make sure that you have a fully charged phone before you get out there. Um, Typically, we'll show we'll either send you a trail map or something online that shows you where you need to go. So just make sure you're familiar with what that trail section is. You could grab a trail map. Many of you use Avenza. I'm not requiring that everyone use Avenza this year. It basically, it's like um, a map that kind of that is on your phone through an Avenza app that can show you where you are along your trail. But, but you do not need to use that. In fact, in this picture here, that's a Venza being used here, but that is not part, that is not a required portion of this year's um, survey. I would also recommend you're going to receive field data sheets that are going to be with you. So take multiple copies of those field data sheets. I would take at least five of them with you. So just print out the stuff that I'm going to be sending for data sheets today and take at least five of them with you on, um, on a clipboard. And then before you head out, just review the directions to your parking lot, trail had you been assigned, and just make sure that everything's fully charged and ready to go. All right, so now's the fun part. Now we're gonna learn like how to actually record the data and what we are looking for. So I'm gonna give you like a bit of a big picture here. Okay, so let's say you've got your assignment. You know what trail section you need to go. So this is you. Here's the little trailhead of where your assigned trail section is. Here's essentially how the survey is going to work. You're going to record and look for those five species that we talked about in part one. And you're going to record it in a, a basically like an imaginary or survey rectangle. So imagine that you're going to start at your trail section and you're going to walk about 50 feet into that first part of that trail section that you got assigned. That is essentially going to serve as the center of your survey rectangle. So that rectangle is gonna consist of like looking to your left 
on that trail section, looking to your right, about 15 feet. So you're going to walk 50 feet in, and that whole time you're going to be looking to your left, you'll be looking to your right, and just see how that kind of creates like almost like a little bit of a grid. And you're going to be looking for those five species along that, along like within this grid. That dot is essentially at the center of a rectangle that you're going to be searching for these species in. When you are looking for species, you should never really have to leave the trail because you're really only looking 15 feet to your left and 15 feet to your right. And then you're looking at along that trail section, 50 feet like that you went in and then another 50 feet to get to the end of that rectangle. I'm gonna show you some videos of me actually walking along the trail section. So it feels a little bit more real than my best attempt at clip art. Uh, that this is, this is the best artistic rendering that I could do of what this is gonna look like. So I'm actually going to show you what it looks like while I'm out walking in the field. Like say I got received my trail assignment and now I'm just going to like how to get to essentially the center of what I'm calling a survey rectangle and looking for those species. So I'm going to play a little bit of a section here. Unfortunately, I filmed this. This was filmed last year. This is part of last year's training. And some of the fields, data fields are going to be a little bit different than last year. So if you are returning, there is some new information, but this is a clip that I made of from last year of me walking along the trail and looking for species and just what these survey rectangles are really all about. All right, I am here and I'm ready to survey. I've got my parking assignment. I know where I'm going. I am ready to get out for a good day of surveying and looking for these five invasive species. Look, I even got my trail conference volunteer swag shirt on, which you guys are going to get at the end of the survey. Um, I don't know what the swag item is this year, but you're going to get something. If you complete a, a, an assignment, you're going to get something nice from the trail conference. As soon as you are finished. So something to look forward to and let's get after it. First thing to do is, of course, make sure you're in the right place. And I know that I was assigned or assigned myself, I should say, Nature Study Woods. And I'm going to read the park advisories, you know, make sure that we are following the rules here. I do want to point out that most of the parks, just like it says here, are carry in, carry out facility. That means we leave no trace. Whatever that we pick up, we put back the way it came. We're going to be courteous and make sure that, you know, we're kind of leaving the place more or less undisturbed. So that's the first thing to look for. I know I'm in the right place, nature study woods, and now I'm ready to go. Okay, now I am really interested in looking for these species at the beginning and close to trailheads. So once you get to your assignment and you know you're in the right spot, the first survey rectangle is going to be slightly different than the rest. So you are going to walk in 50 feet because I a lot of invasive species tend to hover around the trailheads because that's the most disturbed area. So I want to make sure that we survey the area in and around the trailhead. So I am only going to walk in on my first square rectangle in 50 feet. All right. So I'm not, you're not going to go out there with like a meter wheel or like to count feet. Like you're basically just, just do something that works for you. I usually use about 20 paces. Listen, if you walk 20 paces, 25, it doesn't really matter. We're trying to get a basic sense for what's found along your trail section and whether these five species are found on your trail section. So I, you shouldn't be out there like constantly counting to yourself. Just, just walk, just walk about 20 paces to get to the, to the middle of a survey rectangle. And we are out approximating 50 feet by 20 paces. So that's the first thing we are gonna do. Walk bit, uh, 50 paces, uh, 20 paces. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, of course I cheated and I walked it out before, but I just wanted to show you that I usually mark the center of that survey rectangle by like my bag or uh, water bottle, just showing you what I'm bringing with you. Okay, so remember, this is the center of the survey rectangle. So that that area that I just walked before, like I'm going to be having to look for invasive species because that's part of my survey rectangle. That 50 feet I just walked, I got to make sure that I'm searching that for the five species. But right now, I just like to always just figure out where the middle of the place that I'm surveying for. So when I walk out to that area, I just put my stuff down. So I know kind of basically what's at the center of that rectangle. And that's like my bearing. 
And just remember that I'm going to have to look about 50 feet in front of me and the 50 feet I just walked behind me. I didn't have a clipboard, so of course I brought my my soccer um, uh, clipboard, which works, whatever works for you. But the main thing is that I've got a uh, I've got my survey data sheet that I uh, showed you earlier and we'll be passing out. And I am now in my survey rectangle number one okay so i'm going to kind of show you what this reporting process is like and what your data sheet is going to look like but hopefully that makes sense like you're going to get a trail assignment you'll arrive at the parking lot you're going to walk in 50 feet and just put your stuff down put a water bottle down just to mark the the begin uh you know just so you know basically where that survey rectangle takes place so now it's going to be the fun part of where you are collecting invasive species data, right? So you'll have, you're in your survey rectangle and I'm just gonna give an overview of the types of things that you're gonna be looking for. And then I'm gonna show you what this year's field data sheet looks like and is different than last year's field data sheet. So just a quick overview of what your field data sheet is gonna be like, I will send this to you with your assignment, but you're gonna be looking for along that survey rectangle, the number of beech trees that you find within that little like that rectangle area you're going to be look you're going to be recording things like the extent of beech leaf disease that was discovered so you'll be looking for beech trees and then like uh, did you find beech leaf disease did they show symptoms in in that area um, you're also going to be looking for hemlock trees right so oh, I'm, I'm sorry you're also going to be looking for a healthy beach like uh, like did you find beach leaf disease but did you actually see a beach tree because remember what we're really after like is there something that is resistant to that disease how amazing would that be as a surveyor if you found th those those couple of beach trees or that stands that is resisting this disease that would be amazing so not only are we going to report on invasive species but anything that is, seems to be resisting the, uh, um, you know, these forest pests is, is worth reporting. So we're going to do that as well. We'll be looking for hemlock trees. Are there any healthy hemlocks? We'll be looking for hemlock woolly adelgid, presence or absence. We'll also be recording the number of tree of heaven within that rectangle. Um, and then if you find a tree of heaven, look, make sure you're looking for spotted lanternfly. Remember, that's the main host tree for spotted lantern flies. So if you find a tree of heaven, be looking for the little bug as well. Um, and we're also looking for that invasive vine that we learned about in part one, swallowwort. Um, you'll also be recording like every time within each rectangle, you're gonna once record, uh, do an IMAP record on the mobile app for presence or absence of that species. Okay, and then you'll be making any observational notes. I'm going to show you what this year's field data sheet looks like okay so here we go um this is what you are going to be reporting so just remember you're in your survey rectangle and you are looking for uh you're going to be recording say you're in survey rectangle number one you're right near that parking lot okay these are the things that you're going to be recording and i'm going to walk you through all of this i'm going to do it like as an exercise and again show myself in the field kind of looking for these things within that survey rectangle you are going to be noting, and this is just going to be a really quick estimate about approximately the number of beech trees that were present within that rectangle. So if I go back to my PowerPoint slide, right? Remember this little area here, that little rectangle, about how many beech trees were in this area of like 100 feet by, you know, like 15 feet to my left, 15 feet to my right. About how many beech trees did you see within that area? Okay, that's the first thing that we're going to record. Um, in that survey rectangle, did you see any beech leaf disease? Really simple. Was beech leaf disease on any of the beech trees that you saw? Did you find the signs of it? Present or absent? P or A? That's how you'll be recording it there. Okay. And then out of the beech trees that you saw, did any of them show really good health? So if you find a tree, a beech tree within your survey rectangle, that seems to be doing well. It could be that other beech trees within that survey rectangle were really impacted and seem to be like, I have a lot of symptoms of beech leaf disease. If you find a beech tree within it that shows good health or greater than 80% of the leaves on the tree do not have BLD symptoms or those characteristic stripings, we really wanna know about that, okay? So out of the total amount of beech trees, were there any that seemed to have like really good 
healthy leaves. So just as a reminder, like if we look at our, if we went back to that, like identifying beech leaf disease video, and I showed you this. So like, let's say you're looking at, you've recorded about approximately the number of beech trees that were in that survey rectangle. And then you wanted to get a sense, like, are there any beech trees that seem to be doing okay? So this is how you'd go about doing it. Okay, so you'd like look at a tree and you'd say to yourself, okay, well, this is really symptomatic, right? But, and, and in this case, I would say that, yeah, there are some like healthy-ish looking leaves, but certainly not 80% of the leaves in this, in this picture or on this tree seem to be healthy. So if you do happen to notice a tree that seems to be resisting symptoms, I just want you to make note, note of it there. Um, because that is, that's really important to our management as to, as to what, we, what we're looking for. Like if you find that one lingering, it's called like beech tree and seems to be resisting disease, please make note of it. All right. The other things that you are gonna be recording are the approximate number of tree of heaven in the survey rectangle. So within that rectangle, did you see any tree of heaven? Oftentimes tree of heaven aren't necessarily a trail species. If you do tend to find tree of heaven, it does tend to be near parking lots or at the beginning of a trailhead. So oftentimes you won't find tree of heaven, but if you do, just about how many tree of heaven did you find within that survey rectangle? And if you did find a tree of heaven, please look for spotted lanternfly. So look within the leaves of the tree. Remember, look along the leaf scars. Do you see any signs of spotted lanternfly? You do not need to look for spotted lanternfly if you do not find any tree of heaven. So if like in that rectangle, you recorded a zero there for approximate, for the number of tree of heaven in your survey rectangle, you can just leave this blank, just leave it blank just NA or like a hash mark or whatever. You only need to look for spotted lanternfly if you find a tree of heaven, okay? The same applies here. If there are no beech trees in your survey rectangle, like their approximate number of beech trees is zero, you don't have to look for BLD because what are you looking for? <laughs> Get, not gonna be BLD if you, there are no tree, no beech trees, of course, right? So if it's zero, you don't have to do these either, okay? Um, you're also in that survey rectangle going to be looking for swallowwort, present or absent. And then this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And I really need your help. And I'm hoping that we can get this level of detail out of you guys. So if in your survey rectangle, you find hemlock trees. Again, hemlocks are actually fairly rare in the lower Hudson in northern New Jersey. They're actually much more common in the Adirondacks and in the Catskills. But if you do come across a hemlock stand and you find hemlocks within your survey rectangle, you are going to jot down the approximate number of hemlock trees that you saw. And then you're just kind of, again, you're just in survey rectangle number one. With it, if you find those, um, if you do find a hemlock tree um, within that, you're gonna be asking yourself a few different things. Did you find a healthy hemlock within that stand? I want you to record um, whether you have a good, healthy, viable, healthy hemlock within the stand. The vast majority of the hemlocks that you are gonna find are going to show signs of hemlock woolly adelgid. And I really wanna know if you find a stand or a lingering tree that does not show signs of this. So when you get to this part, you'll say, I found whatever, four hemlock trees within that survey rectangle. I want you to ask, is, that, is there any within that that seem to be healthy? I want you to choose the one best looking hemlock tree. And then you're gonna come up to this little coding area here. And I want you to look at whether in that, on that one healthiest looking hemlock tree, what percent of the branch ends have HWA? Okay, and I'm going to show you some pictures of this in a second. If it's a really low percent, so only like 5% of the branch ends seem to have that cottony mass, and I'll show you what a branch end looks like, the needles look green and healthy, then you're going to record it as low because you have to ask yourself what percent of the live branches have the adelgid on it, have that cottony mass. If it's a low percentage, you've got a good, healthy looking hemlock, right? So you're going to record that as low. 
if about 25 to 50 percent of the branch ends have signs of hem hemlock woolly adelgid and the needles are kind of not fully robust or like really green you'll just uh, you'll put that as like moderate that that is like a moderate amount of hemlock woolly adelgid or if the, a lot of the branch ends have hwa on it and the cottony masses and really sickly looking needles then what percent of the live branch ends have hwa is going to be very high if if those branches have a lot of hwa on it then you have you know you're going to record it as high all right let me show you what that would look like in, in sort of like picture form here okay so when you get to the hemlocks you're first going to let me move my zoom stuff out of the way so when you're looking at a hemlock you're going to be like okay there are hemlocks in my survey rectangle now i'm going to try to figure out how bad this infestation is right so I'm going to try and, and see if there's any like lingering hemlocks, ones that are doing quite well. So you're going to look at, you're going to go up to one of the trees that just kind of like looks like, like it's in probably the, the best shape. And you're going to look at these little branch ends. So if I look at this picture here, you see this little green area here? This is the really the part of the hemlock that's growing. You see how on this branch end, there's actually not a lot of hemlock woolly adelgid, but towards the middle part, there's hemlock woolly adelgid everywhere. There's cottony masses here. So this tree clearly has HWA, but it's still putting out new shoots and like the needles are actually looking okay. So maybe this tree is just recently been impacted, but it's still growing at the edges and it's still doing okay. If you look at this one here, over here, you look at the branch ends, there's signs of the adelgid right on the branch. Look at this branch end here. There's like the needles have already fallen off. This is really like this is an un this is an unhealthy looking branch end, right? So it's got a lot of branches that have a lot of hemlock woolly adelgid on it. So you would count that. Just always ask yourself the question: What percent of live branch ends have HWA? If a lot of them have it, or their needles are falling off and they're sickly, then you have a high abundance of HWA in that area. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. The other thing that I'm going to ask you to look for with the special hemlock instructions, if we go back to that, uh, your data map, and again, all you need to ask yourself is, we're going to evaluate, do I have a healthy hemlock in this survey rectangle? We're going to look at the canopy of that. And you're basically just going to look at the needles, not just like really up close, but you're going to look at the tree as a whole. Okay. So here, what you are going to do, is if we are looking at special hemlock instructions, you're gonna be thinking to yourself, you're gonna find that one hemlock tree in the rectangle that looks the healthiest. What percent of the canopy looks healthy? If it is a really low percent of the canopy that looks healthy, then you're going to, um, so just remember a, a, a section of like, if it's low health, then it's in bad health. It's gonna be, Lots of skylight coming through due to dying branches. The needles are going to be pale and grayish. But if it's moderate, he moderately healthy, you should have like some skylight visible. The foliage is beginning to thin. Maybe some sickly lower lowing branches and lighter green needles. But if you've got a high health tree, then it, it's it's a good thing to actually have a lot of the skylight block because that means there's a lot of needles on the tree. They're deep green, and most of the, most of the branches are going to be alive. Let me just show you what that looks like from a health perspective, all right? If I've got a really healthy hemlock, look at what this would look like. You've got, there may not be branches down low, um, but the branches that do have needles on them, they're really full. I like to think of this if I'm looking up into a canopy of a hemlock tree, or even if it's a little sapling, how much of the skylight can I see? If I can't see a lot of the skylight, that's actually a good thing because that means that the branches are full. They've got deep green needles on them. This is a hemlock canopy with high health, with good, strong health. If I've got a hemlock canopy of moderate health, you see how the branches are a little bit thinner. There's like kind of a lighter green hue to the needles. It's kind of looking and you're seeing a little bit more skylight. If I look at it from the side, it's just not as full as if I was looking at the really healthy canopy. It's just like the needles are deeper green. 
but here it's like lighter green and really kind of more sparse. You contrast that with a hemlock canopy with low health. That is a hemlock in really rough shape. I can almost see the entirety of the sky. And this is really what we're worried about and what HWA is doing to our trees is that it's killing the needles. The needles are falling off. And now I've got an open canopy. This sunlight is just streaming down. And now you, 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 you know, that's really ripe conditions for the understory to be really be growing. So essentially what you are doing is comparing that to like a really healthy tree. And just remember what the purpose of these data sheets are. They're really to say, do we have hemlock willy adelgid? And are there any trees that look healthy? So this sounds like a lot, but really you're just using your best judgment. Did I find a healthy tree? Like within the group that is probably gonna be impacted by hemlock. So just make sure that when you get to these gray sections and you're going across, that you're looking at these call out boxes and just seeing what is actually asking of you. Really what we're looking for is like, do the branch ends have a lot of HWA? And is there a healthy canopy there on, on, on a hemlock tree? That's pretty much it. Um, I'm also gonna prompt you to say, did you remember to post your detected or not detected IMAP? And I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then, and any notes that you wanna say, like essentially, um, did you find a healthy looking or resistant hemlock or beech? Just write down a note, like call it out to us really obviously, hey, I saw a lot of beech leaf disease, but there was this one tree that looked great. Say that in the notes. Pull it right out, and then I'll look at more detail um, on these boxes. So that's going to be your data sheet. All right. So getting back to the other PowerPoint presentation, I'll take you through the rest, and that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of what we are doing here. All righty. So that is going through one survey rectangle. Again, just as a review, um, you are going to be looking for these five species along that survey rectangle. Um, again, looking for those five species, looking for hemlock health, looking for beech leaf disease health. Once you went through all the five species and you went across that column on your data sheet, you are then going to walk another 100 paces to the next one. You'll notice that, well, I'm, here I am in my survey rectangle. I'm just going to go and walk to another survey rectangle, and then you're just going to repeat the process over again. As opposed to walking every 50 feet or every 100 feet, I just want to space it out. It's okay if you miss a little bit of data in here because you've got a one to two mile trail section. So there's no real, we don't have to record every single hemlock we see, every single beech tree. We're really just trying to get a representative sam sample along your trail section. So you're just going to keep walking and then do another survey rectangle. And then you'll start another row of your data sheet. So the 50 feet, 200 feet walking. So remember you get to your first 50 feet then you're gonna walk another 250 feet or 100 paces to get to your next one and then look for those five species all over again. They're just estimates. Don't stress out about it. Like if you end up walking more than 100 paces, don't stress out about it. Just get to that next survey rectangle and then look for those species within there. You can always take more data points. You can write things down. You can have more survey rectangles if you want, but don't stress out about it. The main thing is you're recording information on health, and these five species along your trail section. So the best thing that I can do for you right now is to actually walk you through it and continue my little journey here along this trail section and be looking for the species and how you do it within your trail section. So I'm gonna take you through those, that's part right now. Pick up where we left off here. So remember, I'm in this middle of my first survey rectangle. I've got my data sheet and I'm gonna be looking for those five species within my survey rectangle. Oh, that I'm now starting to get ready to look for all of these species in the columns that I need to get. All right, so here I am at the middle of my survey rectangle. So what that means is I got to look 50 feet back in the direction I came from. So there was a start, remember that trailhead sign? And I've also got to search 50 feet in this direction, which we haven't quite explored yet. I'm looking for essentially beech trees, tree of heaven. All right, so let's just kind of scan around here and see what I'm seeing. Uh oh, hold on a second. Ah. 
Okay, I'm go. looking for incised fumort on the grounds, not really seeing much. Oh, look, this is kind of looks. Boring. Okay, so last year we were looking for incised fumort, but this year we're actually looking on the ground. I'll, I'll go back a little bit since I, I lost the screen there for a little bit, but we'll be looking for swallowwort on the ground. Remember, swallowwort is that vine that kind of creeps along the dog strangling vine. So we'll be looking on the forest floor for that vine, but the rest of it, you're looking for hemlocks and beach and tree of heaven, right? So you're really looking for trees at this point, uh, 15 feet to your right and left, and then 50 feet back and forward. Kind of scan around here and see what I'm seeing. Okay, I'm looking for incised fumort on the ground. And again, you're looking for swallow wart, not incised fumort this year. Not really seeing much. Oh, look, this is kind of looks parsley-ish. Oh, nope, no purple flowers. That's good old mugwort. That's not gonna count, all right? Um, this kind of looks potentially beachy, right? Maybe kind of seeing the leaves, but don't be confused because this is a birch tree. I know it's birch because it's not quite smooth and you see those lines kind of running horizontally. Birch trees tend to have that, that sort of like peely bark to it, right? And the so you see those little lenticels that are running across? Beach don't have that, right? They're nice, smooth elephant bark. So that's a birch tree. Don't need to record that. But this is just looking for on tree ID, just a little reminder. Those lenticels actually is what causes that. They kind of run horizontally. So I'm looking at a... But I think we're going to get an ad here. At nope. a birch tree. And I know it's hard to see here, but remember birch trees have that serrated knife margin on it. All the shadowing that I'm seeing here is shadows. There's, there's no signs of beach leaf disease because it's not a beach tree. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so I'm looking all along here, and I will just say that I did not see anything previous to this. Um, and, you know, here we got some, some maple trees, obviously, not seeing anything around me. No purple flowers, looking for those beech trees. No, not looking good there. Let's keep on walking. Okay. So in the first 50 feet, I really didn't see. Okay, much. notice how what I did was I got to the, I was started at the center of my rectangle. I then walked back to where I had originally walked and just, just was looking for those species, right? I was looking for hemlock, beech, tree of heaven, and the, and swallowwort on the ground. Okay, now I'm back here. Now I got to walk 50 feet in the other direction. So I'm more or less like counting my steps. I know I got to get to 20, right? And let's just kind of keep looking here. Mm, not seeing much no purple flowers i'm not really and again when i'm looking at the ground i'm looking for that dog strangling vine i don't in, in fact last year i was looking for incised few more but in here i'm not seeing any of that like the uh, of swallowwort on the ground either three of heaven oh wow look at this uh-oh what do we got here let's look up oh boy this is not good you got all right, so if I pause that screen, see what we're looking at there? Stripes, same characteristic leaves, not good. I see what I'm looking at here. That is definitely beech leaf disease. I'm seeing the stripes. Let's just make sure that I'm actually, actually looking at a beech tree. Yep, here we go. Look, elephant skin bark, smooth. Let me take a look at the leaves. Does it have the wave crest on it? Yep. Yep. Remember the beach wave crest on it? That checks out. So this striping pattern that I'm seeing most definitely beach leaf disease. So now I got to make sure that I'm recording what I need. So I know I've got a beach tree. Let's look at the diameter. Oh boy. That's okay, now we don't have to do diameter this year, but remember we do need to look at like what percent, like if, if I do find a beech tree, is there anything that's looking healthy in here? And I'm telling you at on this tree right here, that was a lot of symptomatic leaves. So it is like in this area, there really wasn't anything that would seem to be resistant. It's pretty close to six inches. I'm gonna call this a mature tree. I'm gonna say that it's bigger than, so I've got one, birch tree and i'm really at the edge of my survey rectangle i'm looking around i'm not seeing much else I'm not really seeing any saplings this seems to be an isolated birch uh beech tree and it most all right so what i would do then is i would go to my i would go to my survey rectangle i'm in survey rectangle number one approximate number of beech trees in the present in the rectangle 
I would code that as one. Signs of beach leaf disease, yes, present, right? Approximate number of beach trees that show good health. That one beach tree that we saw was not good. So I would say 0%. And even though it was one, you're usually beach comes in, in bunches and you'll see that later in the video, but approximate number of tree of heaven in the survey rectangle, zero. SLF present, don't need to report it because there was no tree of heaven. I did not see any swallow wart, so I will code that as A. Approximate number of hemlock trees present, didn't see any, so I will code that as a zero as well. Healthy hemlocks, don't, that's a NA or just a dash, right? And then I'm going to show you later in the video, this is, always a, this is always going to be a prompt here to essentially say, did you remember to post the observation to, um, sorry, this keeps doing a formula. All I wanted to do was a dash, <laughs> but you'll be writing this down there. Did you remember to post detected or not detected to IMAP? I'll show you how to do that in a second. So if that was my first survey rectangle, there really wasn't much data to it. And it may be on your trail section, you don't find much. And it could just be zeros across. And that's why some assignments take a, take a while, but some of it, if you're not really finding anything, it, 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 you can go through it really quickly. All right, so let's just keep continuing with this video and we'll get on to a next sur survey rectangle. But that's how I would have coded the first one that I saw. Um, and so let's just keep walking and then we'll find some other species along this walk that I'm taking you on. All righty, here we go. I began, I've done, I've registered my beech tree, didn't find any tree of heaven, didn't find any in size, few more. We're going to talk about jumping worms in a little bit, but let's just say, so remember, this was last year's video. We did jumping worms too. We're not doing it this For year. the sake of argument here that I am now done, ready to move on to my next survey rectangle. Well, from here on out, you're not just walking 20 paces in, you are going to be walking a hundred. So what I what you are going to realize is obviously if you're walking 100 paces, you're going to miss some surveying space, right? So that's okay. We are really just trying to get a representative sample of the trail and have it feel more like a hike. So in between, stretch your legs. Let's walk 100 paces to get to the center of our next survey rectangle. So you'll drive yourself nuts if you count to 100 every time you walk. Just ballpark it. Just go for a hike. Just walk, find a new survey rectangle that's somewhere down the down the, the waist. Don't you don't have to count 100 paces. It's okay. Just somewhere, just keep walking <laughs> and then just choose another rectangle. So and I'm gonna now start walking 100 paces. You will do the same, and then you're gonna start it all over again. Be looking for beach leaf disease, spotted lanternfly, tree of heaven, and hemlock, right, and swallow ward. Okay. All right, so we're walking, we're walking. We two or survey rectangle number two, and we will be good to go. And you just keep doing that till you finish your trail section that you were assigned. So best of luck. I'm going to show you how to register some of the other species along this hike here that I've assigned myself just to do some repetition. So you guys are feeling confident and comfortable doing this on your own. All right, coming down another point to my survey rectangle, almost at 100 paces here. And there we are. I'm gonna put my bag down, kind of take a look around me a little bit. There goes the bag. I know I'm at the center of that survey rectangle. And just look around. Aha. I have a sneaking suspicion that this is a tree of heaven. Well, let's go up to it and let's make sure. All right. I know I can look at the bark, right? Boy, that's looking pretty smooth. Feeling a little cantaloupe -y. It's got a big diameter. All right, let's take another look at another angle here. Kind of walking around. Let's take a look up in the trees. Oh, yeah, it's got that palm tree appearance. All right, and that is a great way to tell, right? Kind of palm tree, kind of looks like a sumac kind of thing, right? So that's that's a great look at a tree of heaven. And if you really saw it in person, you'd see it's a very cantaloupe uh, rind to it. And the other thing is always look for... If you've got an adult like this, there's usually going to be little ones that are near it that are growing as saplings. It's got that palm tree appearance. It's got the opposite leaflets. And it's got that cantaloupe rindy appearance to it on the outside. Kind of that, you know, pretty hallmark feature of it. So I, I believe that's a tree of heaven. OK, we're going to mark that later. But I also wanted to show you just another sign within the same survey rectangle. 
Here is a tree of heaven that's just down the way. And you know, typically, if you got the big tree, you're probably going to have the smaller ones. And this is a good opportunity to kind of take a look at the leaves. Um, we know that the leaves have those notches at the base, right? And you can see that it's got that gland on the ends there. It's got that notch, smooth margins, kind of coming to a tapered point there. All right. Of course, the smell. Oh, yeah. Kind of like that burnt rubber smell. This is all pointing towards that. Let's take a look at those leaf scars. Let's get it right by my thumb. Oh, yeah. That's looking like that little pack. Remember a little Pac-Man swallowing the pill or the, uh, you know, the, uh, like, almost like a heart-shaped leaf scar? Pac-Man, right? That kind of, like, um, almost like a heart-shaped leaf scar there. Here's a really clear look at it. So I am very, very confident that we are looking at Tree of Heaven. So, of course, I'm going to mark this in IMAP. You can see the lenticels above me. So I will show you now kind of how to register that on IMAP as a Tree of Heaven. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Okay, now we're really going to learn how to say, okay, so we I went over the field data sheet. That's really kind of straightforward, right? You're just going to go across the row answering those questions. That's You're going to write that down. But the other thing that you have to do is you got to report it on IMAP. So if you find a tree of heaven, you just need to report it once, okay? Or if you find a beech tree, just report it once. I'm going to show you how to use the IMAP app right now. Being a tree of heaven. So now I've got to register this on the IMAP uh, on Vasive's mobile app. So I'm going to click this little button. You see this one right here? That's what the IMAP app icon looks like. It's like a little bug and a little leaf on there. So you're just going to click and open up the app. Button way down at the bottom. IMAP app. It's got a little bug and a leaf on it. Going to click that. Okay. I am going to now go up to the upper right and part of the box and hit add observation and the first okay, thing let I'm me do is take a the IMAP let me, let's show that again I'll pause the video so I'm going to click this little button way down at the bottom IMAP app it's got a little bug and a leaf on it going to click okay you see this part here when you get to that part you're just going to click add observation it's right at the top Okay, so you found the tree of heaven. Now you just need to report it that it was found in your survey rectangle. Okay, you're going to hit add observation. That okay, I am going to now go up to the upper right hand part of the box and hit add observation. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a photo. I'm now looking at it again, right? This is what we. I right. am going to now I'm going show to that part one more right time and pause it. Part of the box and hit add observation. Okay. And that's going to take you to a graphic that looks like this. You're going to hit take photo using camera. That's it. That just hit that. And now you're going to take a photo of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is take a photo. I'm now looking at it again, right? This is what we just saw. I'm going to take a photo of it. All right, here we go. This is going to be confirmation. I'm definitely looking at tree of heaven. I could also, you know, take a picture of the big trunk over there, that cantaloupe rind one that I took. I'm then going to in the bottom right. That'll prompt you just to say use photo. It looks like a good photo. I've got good ID features here. I can clearly see the leaflets. It looks like tree of heaven. So I'll just say use photo. Say use photo. All righty. Now the next thing you can see. All right. So now you're going to see a picture of what you just took there. So you know that you're in good shape. Okay. See down here, right, as I'm scrolling. Okay. You have the picture. Uh, we've already taken the photo. And now I've got selected that custom list. So now I got to say what. All right. You see right here where it had the custom list. Now, all of these custom ones that you made, they're already there. You don't have to roll it X through everything, the things that you were looking for. And you're just going to come down and choose Tree of Heaven, Alanthus. But it is that I was looking for. All right. And of course, I'm now going to select Tree of Heaven. I know that I've seen it here. I've got my photo. I'm going to click species detected. All right. So I saw it in that tree uh, in that survey rectangle. So I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm then going to click species detected. Now, if I was in a. Yeah. So you're going to click species detected there. You can see right under that your phone will automatically know that it's May 24th. It, it, this is when I'm taking the video. Of course, um, it, it already has its longitude and latitude for you. And you can type things in like the time search at this, but you don't feel like you need to. Um, you can also say that, you know, you can also put in notes like the size of the area containing the invasive, but we already know what that is. You don't need to fill in these, these pull down menus, but of course, if you wanted to write down some observation comments, you could, you could say things like, all right, found, 
three, tree of heaven. Whoops, tree of heaven at this site. You could put in notes like that, but don't feel like you have to. Okay, and there you go. It is loaded. All right, so it's really as simple as that. If you find three tree of heaven, you do not need, to, you just have to take one picture. All we need is just like, I found tree of heaven in this survey rectangle. And I have to take pictures of all three of them in that survey rectangle. So just one picture of each of the species per survey rectangle. That's it. That's it. All righty. So now I've got my tree of heaven uploaded. Now, of course, I got to do the next part and look for spotted lanternfly nymphs. Remember, at this stage, they're really feeding on succulent growth. So here's that tree of heaven that I that I show that I had uploaded. So I'm just basically scanning this plant and any tree of heaven in my survey rectangle for the presence of that black nymph, right, with the white polka dots on the back. Now, of course, I'm just showing you this. I, I have done a search. We see the leaf scar there, but I'm looking up and down the plant. Here's another one right by it, looking for the presence of that spotted lantern fly nymph. Now, after searching just for a few minutes, kind of in and around the area, looking for presence of those little beetle-like uh, the uh, nymphs, right? I can then have to go and say that I did not find spotted lantern fly. So I'm going back to my phone. This is very important because remember, in each of the survey rectangles, you're looking for five species. If you looked for something and then didn't find it, you need to you need to say that yes, I searched here, didn't find it. So in this instance, you found tree of heaven, but you did not. You looked for but did not find spotted lanternfly. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Back to my IMAP app that I'm clicking, and you can see that I've loaded right. A couple of the tree of heaven, that big one that we found, right? That big one uh, with the big trunk. I looked on that one. You can also see that I've now loaded the one, uh, the sapling. But now I'm going to add an observation at this site. And now I am going to do this for spotted lanternfly. Now, I did not find spotted lanternfly at this site. So you do not need to take a photo of a species that you did not see, but I'll show you how to add a species saying that I searched this site, but I did not find anything. So as you scroll down, you see a species. It says none selected. I am going to hit um, and pull the pull down for spotted lanternfly here. There you go. You can see that it is hit. And I'm now going to say species not detected. So I'm clicking that. I, I know that that's registered. I've got my observation date. It has the location. It is all good. And then you just hit save. So I know that at that site, at that time, at the exact spot, I looked for spotted lanternfly and I didn't find it. So the other thing is, remember, you're looking for other species too. Say in that survey rectangle number two, I didn't find, I was looking for beech trees. I was looking for hemlocks, right? And I did not, if it, uh, or I, I should say, I looked for beech leaf disease. If there was, um, so if you are looking for these trees and you do have a hemlock, right? But you didn't find any hemlock woolly adelgid, which is probably going to be rare. You should report that you didn't detect it. But if there were no hemlocks and no beech trees at all in the survey rectangle, you don't have to report anything, right? Because if there were, it wasn't anything there to report. But if you looked for something like specifically and didn't find that invasive species in there, then you should report that it was unobserved. So for example, in survey rectangle number two, if you were looking for swallowwort, you got to do that in every, all of the survey rectangles, just say, I looked for it here. I looked all over the ground. I saw no signs of it. Then you should write down, then, then you should report that you looked for swallowwort and didn't find it, okay? But for something like beech leaf disease, when you're looking for it, but there were no beech trees, you, there's no need to do anything on IMAP, right? Because there were no beech trees. Of course, there's not going to be any uh, beech leaf disease. All right. So that's pretty much it. As you go through each of the survey rectangles, this is what you're going to be looking for. It sounds like a lot of work, but it actually goes really quick. So just think about it and break it down. Each of the survey rectangles, you're looking for the five species, right? You're, and you're just going to look in that area. Do I see any beech trees? No. Do I see any hemlocks? No. Um, did, I looked for um, swallowwort, didn't see any. So I got to report these things. Like, you know, I just didn't see any there, but I looked for it. Okay. You're going to do that on your field data sheet and any invasive species, you're going to be reporting on IMAP invasives because 
Remember, IMAP Invasives is just for invasive species, that mobile app, right? But worst case scenario, you got it all written down on your field data sheet. So as you go through the survey rectangles, you're in your second one, you just record it as you go. Approximate number of beech trees, say there were none in that one, just kind of make your way across till you get through your entire survey assignment. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up, guys. Um, after you go through all of that, see, you'll be ending your survey for the day. You'll find that probably your first survey rectangle, you're kind of working out the kinks, but once you get going and get into a rhythm, it, it can go like really quickly. Lots of people can stay out for number for like a couple of hours. Sometimes just you, you can do it all in one day. Sometimes you're going out multiple days to get it done. But whatever you do on that one day, just make sure you record the date, the trail segment name, which by the way, I will be giving to you on your assignment. Just write down who was out that day on your field data sheet, the start time that you began your survey and ended, and just total it up. So that if you end up going on another day, you just start a new survey sheet. And by the end, you can kind of like total all the hours together for reporting. All right, there's one last thing that you've got to do. So all of that is in the field. In each survey rectangle, you're reporting on the five species um, on your field data sheet, but also like any invasive species that you looked for and either found or didn't find um, in each of the rectangles. But the last thing is that even though you are finding and you're reporting on IMAP invasives, it's not actually officially loaded until like you do this final step. I do not recommend doing this final step until you get home and are near Wi-Fi, but this is essentially what you've got to do. At the end of the day, you get home, you've got your phone, go back into your IMAP app and you're going to see a whole bunch of yellow boxes. You, in order to actually upload it to the website, you're going to need to go through uh, like some really simple steps here. The yellow boxes, you might have however many observations. You might have had like 10 to 20 of these throughout the day that you've put into your IMAP app. All you need to do, and I'd recommend doing like three or four at a time, just click this checkbox. All right. And then once that's all checked, you're going to go to this part here and just say upload selected. And that's actually going to load it into the IMAP site. So that's it. At when the fields, you're going to have a whole bunch of these yellow boxes that was basically like pictures of what you saw or didn't or didn't see, right? Then at the end of the day, you come back, you just have to hit a check mark and then hit upload selected. And it'll be thinking and thinking and thinking. And I would act plug it in when you're doing this so that you don't run the battery phone on your uh down on your phone. Because sometimes it takes a while to upload to the site, but that's essentially what you're going to be doing. Hit the little check mark box hit upload and then you're done. Once it's set, it'll say like, hey, it's it's uploaded and done and complete. But I would like plug it in, do the check boxes, let it run, go do the dishes, whatever, let it go. <laughs> Just make sure your phone's plugged in while you're doing this uploading process. All right, some final notes just on safety and stuff. Of course, you're gonna be out walking, beware of ticks, wear long pants. You know, it, be sure that what you're touching, if you think like, if you are unsure, you know, be make sure you are not touching poison ivy. Okay, poison ivy has hairy rope, hairy vine. Do not touch it. If there's any question in your mind, whether you're looking at like tree of heaven and you want to look at the leaves and get a picture of the leaf, and you think it might be poison ivy, poison ivy, three leaves, all right, and hairy vine. Do not touch it. Any question in your mind, just don't touch it. Just take a picture from afar. All right. Um, the other thing is to make sure that you're packed right. So ensure, again, multiple copies of your data sheets, clipboard, pencils, um, maybe like yeah, bring a fully charged phone, as I mentioned before. Just make sure you know where you're going. So bring out a trail map. Sometimes binoculars can be helpful um, or like take a camera if you want to take photos. But I definitely recommend taking your quick ID guide that you'll be getting and plenty of water, snacks, whatever you need, sunscreen, bug repellent, especially in the humid months of the summer, be, make sure that you're loaded up with uh, bug repellent. Uh, that, that, that can be rough at, at times. All right, I do not, I gave you a lot of information tonight. Don't want you worrying about how to return your data. That part's easy, we can do that over email, but essentially once you've fully completed your trail section,
just let me know. Just send us an email to let us know that you are done. And then I'm going to send you instructions into how to return your data sheets. Because remember, you're going to have the physical data sheet and then IMAP just gets immediately reported. So the cool thing with IMAP is that once you upload it, I'll know exactly where you saw that species. I'll have a picture of it and you don't have to worry about it ever again. But we have the physical field data sheets just as a, sort of like a double check and something that you are, you know, may, may feel better just like physically writing it down versus like being in the app world. So either way, there's something for everybody. And I, I just don't want to overwhelm you with too much information on returning the data for now. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So for now, this is what I need from you all. You are going to fill out a survey questionnaire to request a trail assignment of your choosing. I'm going to put the link in the chat and I'm also going to send a follow-up email. And in that follow-up email, I'll like see what your request is for a trail section. Like, hey, I want to be in this park. I want to be on this trail section. This is the place I want to explore and look for these species. All right. It, if it's in a state park, you might have to fill out a volunteer service agreement before you start surveying. But right now I'm going to put in the chat of this, which is a link to our Google form. It may be that you have already filled this out. Sorry, I got to get into the chat here. All right. Everyone in a meeting. There's a link to the Google form, but I'm also going to uh, send this to you in a follow up email after the webinar. So don't worry about it if you can't do it right now. This is a simple questionnaire saying like, you know, do you want a trail section that's near a parking lot? Do you are you OK with hiking on steeper parts of hiking trails? Um, you know, we want to make this fun and easy for you. How far are you willing to drive to get to your trail section, you know, from your home? Like simple stuff like that. It won't take long for you to fill out. And if there's a park or trail you really want to explore, I say go for it. Just do it. Put in your request and we'll do the best best we can to match you up. Okay. So that is the chat. Um, what else do I got for you before we sign off here? I think that's pretty much it. Um, so just expect a follow-up email from us. Um, last but not least, I will say that there's a couple of options. Um, it is now 811. If you want to stay on afterwards, I can show you if you do not know Seek, which I also asked for you all to download ahead of time, and you were just wanting a little bit of extra help with your ID, um, not just like based on this webinar, but to have a live app that you can use and like just to build confidence for these five species that you're that it is actually what it is that you're looking at. You can stay on. I'll show you how to use that app in a second. I am also going to like it was a lot you know using an app can be kind of a little bit overwhelming but if you have imap ready to go there will be an opportunity tonight to stay on a little bit and we can practice like loading observations as a fake species i'll put something on my screen and i'll take you through the process of actually posting an observation so you can practice using the app so feel free to stay on afterwards to do that we'll launch right into that next and the only other thing is if you wanted to brush up on your id um ids and before you headed out and got your actual assignment we are i'm doing a walk next thursday i believe june 8th it's going to be from 6 to 7 30 and i found a park down in orangeburg this is buttermilk falls county park i don't know if any of you have been there before but i found a park in a nice trail section that actually has all five of these species that you're looking for so we'll see all five we'll see hemlocks we'll see beach we'll see Everything that we need to reporting, swallow word. Um, so if you wanted to come out and met when like, ah, you know, I kind of want to see this live in person and make sure and practice the reporting procedures, come on out next week. Um, even if you feel like you're good and you just want to go out for a hike and meet up with people, we'll be there Thursday, 6 to 730. Come on out. Uh, it's a great this is the this is a great walk. Uh, it's got really nice views. And it's got all the species that we're looking for. So you'll be fully confident if you come out to that. It's, again, these are all optional. So good luck with everything. Um, you have access to this webinar. And um, we can you can stay on the call for however long. And we can practice reporting if you've got IMAP already. And we'll learn about um, Seek by iNaturalist, which will help with the IDs. It's a, it's a really great app that can, that can help you out with your identification and building confidence. So with that. I think we'll stop there and uh, I think that's about it. I'll stop the recording.
thanks for attending. I'm happy to stay on for as long as people have questions and uh, just want to build confidence. Even if you come out of this not fully understanding, we, we are here. We're here to help. We have plenty of surveyors and they always kind of come out feeling good, confident, and ready to go. So we'll get you there eventually. Thanks, everyone.